and 60s, but like a lot of local resorts, it fell on hard times and did close. So to find out what might happen at the Nebuli next, we are welcoming this morning, and please give a warm Chamber of Commerce welcome to Michael Trainer, Chief Executive Officer of Nebuli Investors, LLC. Michael. Legislators T.J. Briggs and Peter Lopez are here in the room. Uh, Elliot Auerbach, who's the Ulster County Comptroller. We've got Carl Chipman, who's the Town of Rochester Supervisor. We've got uh, Gary Bellows, Town of Hurley Supervisor. Jim Quigley, Town of Ulster Supervisor. Terry Howe, Town of Warson Board, who's one of my bosses. They run my project. Uh, Frank Flynn, uh, Chair of the Ulster County Regional Chamber of Commerce, and Ward Todd. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Catskill Hudson Bank is a sponsor. Thank you for that. So, what I want to do is spend a little bit of time talking about what's going on in Albany right now. It's, uh, it's quite a momentous occasion in New York. Um, there's lots of, uh, of legislative developments that are really focused on revenue for the state. And one of them has a potential for a huge impact in Ulster County. So without further ado, Let's go back about a year, um, almost exactly a year ago. Uh, uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo uh, announced an initiative to expand non-tribal gaming in the state of New York. Um, just to put things in perspective, I mean, gaming is happening already in New York State. It's happening in racetracks, uh, have uh, slot machines, the Indian tribes have reservations. And one of the key focuses of the new administration is to get uh, revenue from legalize uh, non-tribal gaming. So what's, go what's going to happen, and what's already been happening, is a constitutional amendment is in the works in the state of New York. That constitutional amendment is going to permit up to seven non-tribal gaming facilities to be established in the, in the state of New York. Uh, and that's a big deal. The reason that's a big deal is uh, for a place like the, the Catskill region, it is the engine that could revitalize the Catskill regional economy. So you know, just think back over, over the years about how many resorts and other destinations there have been in the, in the Catskills that have kind of folded. Yeah. Natalie is just one of, I think, of uh, literally hundreds that have done that. So this is a very big deal because the state of New York is about to do something, and it's very likely that in November uh, that you, you all will see on the ballot an initiative to legalized non-tribal gaming, uh, it's, it, is, uh, it is going to happen. It is, is, it is something that is going to dramatically impact some regions. And the Catskill region is one of the targeted places. So, so let's talk about what ha what's existing right now. Right now, I've got a, a map up there that shows where there are gaming facilities. And these are full class threes, they call it gaming, which is table games and you know, not just slot machines. So you can see the state of New York is literally surrounded by states. You know, you have uh, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Massachusetts will shortly legalize gaming, uh, Ontario to the north, and of course New Jersey to the south. So when you look at this map, this is going to be a, a this is this is going to create lots of opportunity for some areas. <clears throat> Obviously, I'd like for it to create an opportunity for Ulster County. So here's, here's kind of what we did. Um, what we did was we, we tried to put together a case for putting a casino in the Ulster County uh, region. What we did was we located all of the resorts that historically had been in the Catskills <coughs> district and we put them on a map. And lo and behold, half of them were in the eastern portion of Ulster County, uh, in, in, in Ulster County on the east, and the other half of them were in Sullivan County, the western portion. And if you look at the properties that have historically anchored the region, 
it's to the west, it's the Concord and Grossinger properties. Most people would consider those to be the anchor properties. And to the east, it's the Neville property. And you know, the road infrastructure, the access, all that kind of stuff kind of favors those properties. So what we constructed is an argument that we've been promoting in Albany that says that we want to create a regional destination in the Catskills. And the way you create a regional destination is you anchor the region with properties to the east and west. Uh, in this case, it would be on the east, the Neville, on the west, the Concord property. So it's highly likely that um, in Sullivan County, uh, the, the owners of the Monticello Raceway will get uh, approval to put a casino in. So the issue is, it is gaming coming to the Catskills. The issue is, where is it coming? And we've been promoting two as the right number for the Catskills, one on the east and one on the west. And obviously, we're hoping to have it on the west, uh, on the east side of the Neville property. So what does that mean? Um, what that means is it means a lot of jobs. You know, we have an economic study that's underway right now, but the, the likely result is 1,700 direct jobs at the Neville itself, many of these being very high paid jobs. Uh, and then most people put a multiplier of two against it to say how many indirect jobs are being created. So you're talking about around about 5,000 jobs being created regionally as a result of this. That's a big deal. Just to dwell on that for a second, it's not just the creation of jobs, it's also the economic activity that's, that's going to create. So you know, I noted at the beginning, a number of speakers that got up here said buy local. Um, we're working with local and regional chambers of commerce, including the Ulster County Chamber of Commerce, to sign buy local agreements. So where the Neville Project uh, will be obligated to buy locally wherever it possibly can for goods and services. But this is, this is not a recycling of local money, though. This project is going to draw money from outside of Ulster County. You know, many of the initiatives that have happened successfully locally have been great, but what they've done is they've reallocated local money. It's not going to involve any new money coming from outside of the region. A project like this is going to draw half a billion dollars a year into the local economy from outside of Ulster County. This is money that's coming from northern New Jersey, southern Connecticut, and the New York metropolitan area. That's bringing outside money into this economy. And I think that's a very important point. So let's just focus on the opportunity here. So Albany is about to do something that is going to allow us to bring that kind of an economic engine into Ulster County. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. This is very, very important for the region here. I'll talk later about how I need your help to do this. But this, this, is, the, this is the perfect storm. You know, it's Hurricane Sandy uh, and, and other economic necessities mean that the state of New York has got to increase its revenue. The way it's going to do that is through either increased uh, focus on uh, hydro fracturing, fracking, and gaming. And those are really energy and gaming are the two places where New York State is going to plug its uh, budget shortfall. Two weeks ago, I was with uh, New York State Com Comptroller uh, uh, Tom DiNapoli, and he said that there's another billion dollar shortfall to the New York budget as a result of lost revenue from Hurricane Sandy alone. So this, this is going to happen. And when it happens, there's up to up to seven casinos will be permitted in the, in the amendment that's likely to happen with the New York Constitution. And so the issue is where are they going to go? Wherever they go, those are going to create great economic activity. And I would suggest to you that downstate New York is where all the action is. There's already casinos and a relative lack of population you know, north and west of Albany. So the action is all south of Albany. It's the Catskill region and it's New York City. You know, we, in our economic studies, we've assumed that there will likely be two in the New York City metropolitan area, in the outer boroughs of New York, and there'll likely be two in the Catskills. Obviously, we plan to be one of them. So what, what's up with the Neville? Why, why the Neville? First off, and thanks to a number of people in the room, we have the unconditional support of your government. The Ulster County Legislature, the legislature unanimously passed a resolution favoring gaming. 
the town of Orsing and the, and the uh, village of Ellenville also unanimously passed resolution supporting it. There is uh, county executive is publicly in support of it. There is not a single person in government that is not in, in local, you know, including many towns, you see Carl Chipman nodding his head as well, uh, the, including many town supervisors up and down Route 209, the, the Rondell Valley. There's not a single politician that is vocal against this. And you did that for us. We're 90 minutes from New York City. We'll be the closest casino. We will literally be the closest casino to New York City, except for one or two that might be in the city, right? But uh, as far as destination resorts, we'll be closer than Mount Airy Lodge. We'll be much closer than Atlantic City. We'll be much closer than Foxwoods, Mohegan Sun, which are in Connecticut. I don't have to tell people about the unemployment situation. And it's probably a lot higher in the Alvaro or Orsing area. I know it is. Um, the Ulster County has the dubious distinction of having won the race to the bottom in terms of Hudson Valley unemployment. So you know, this is a great opportunity to change that in a very, very meaningful way. We already talked about access. Pretty obvious. It's extremely easy to get to the network. It's a great, great location. So what are we doing? What's our business plan? So there's a couple of things that we need to do. We have to do everything right. One of the things we need to do is a lot of pre-development work. We're spending about $100,000 a month getting ready. We have to be able to tell Albany that the Neville is going to be ready to go. Why? Because the state is going to want tax revenue as fast as possible. And so no, the, we, we, can, we, won't, we will not be successful if we say, look, Give us a license and then we'll go through the secret process in New York and, and, and then we'll figure out how we get our approvals to go. We need to go through that entire process right now so that we, we are literally ready to go to put up a temporary structure and then a permanent structure of the property. That will tell Albany that they will get tax revenue fastest from us. Lobbying, I, you know, the bane of my existence, I've got a couple lobbies here right now. Um, I'm not sure what they do, <laughs> but uh, they drive me crazy. Um, but uh, we're obviously doing a lot of lobbying in Albany uh, right now in order to make sure people are aware of the economic impact that this is going to bring to Ulster County and how important this is to the region. Public relations will be setting up a website in January. You know, 2003 will obviously be the make or break it year for us. Uh, we've rented a storefront in Ellenville. In January, we're going to have kind of a grand opening. Um, the, our offices, in, which are next to the post office in downtown Ellenville, um, is part office, but mostly kind of showroom exhibition space for you know for parts of the Neville that we've disassembled and moved down there. One of my guys, Eric Atkins, here is running that project, and it's going to be a great place for people to come and visit, uh, find out about the project, see you know, see what's coming, but also be reminded of what's there, because you can't visit the property right now. <coughs> and then there's economic impact studies. So there's an enormous amount of research that's being done right now. We've got two firms that are doing very comprehensive studies as to the job creation, the overall economic impact of the region. And it's not just jobs. You know, The jobs create demand for housing, which creates you know, demand for restaurants, which creates demand for small business. It's, a, it's an enormous undertaking to do all of the studying, traffic, and, and lots of other things. And that's all underway as well. And last but not least, community involvement. So I've given, I've given, I don't know, 40 of these presentations, but this is the biggest group, and I'm appreciative of that. Um, but uh, you know, anywhere from two to three people on up to this size, and it really, it, it isn't going to happen unless the people in this room not only want it to happen. It's I, I'm hoping that everybody walks out of here and says, yeah, that's a great idea. I want to do that. But it's not just that. I need people to be vocal. I need people to say, we have to have this. We need this. Because otherwise, I'm not going to get it. And the county's not going to get it. So we need people in this room to be outspoken in their support for this project and what it's going to do for the regional economy. So there's a few development principles that we've adopted. And I'll just kind of tick through them. And these, these, these will apply to how the Neville will be redeveloped. And for those who, who haven't been there recently, it's in pretty bad condition right now. Most of the buildings will be torn down. All but three of the buildings will be torn down. First, first
first and foremost, be family friendly. The Netherlands has always been a great place to bring your, your family and teach them how to ski and skate and all that kind of stuff. And we intend to be true to that legacy. Uh, first class, we're not going to attract people from New York if it's not first class. It's just a bottom line. It has to be a great facility where people want to come. Preserve the heritage of the property, modernize, obviously that goes with being first class. Respect and include the community. Our, our draft, I'll show you the plans, it's in one of the slides is, that's to come. But the redevelopment plans have been, we're on probably the hundredth iteration of it. And the reason we've had so many iterations is because we've constantly been meeting with local official business leaders, et cetera, to find out kind of what's the perfect thing to do, how, how do we best capture the spirit of the Neville Create jobs and buy locally. I mean, what more can I say? I assume that's uh, that's good news for this audience. All right. So the current conditions. The current conditions is terrible. It's uh, there's a there's an inch of mold on the floor in all the buildings. The prior owners left the water in the pipes when they abandoned the property. The, many of the pipes burst. Uh, there's extensive water damage throughout the property. Uh, it's really not salvageable. There's uh, three buildings on the property. For those of you that know it, that can be saved. One is the uh, the ice arena. It is truly spectacular. It's one of the most beautiful outdoor ice arenas I've ever seen. That would be restored. And then there's two that the iconic tower uh, is in very good condition actually. That can be restored. And uh, and then there's a, a a wing of the hotel called the Empire, which will, will be scraped down to the steel, but it can partially be restored. The rest of it is all going to be that knocked down. So I talked about how we get Albany to say yes, and one of those things is revenue fast. So the plans would involve a temporary casino that could be built in, within a few months of being given the go-ahead, and that would be on kind of the forward part of the property. If you see on the upper left-hand corner, that's the entrance <coughs> off of, off of uh, 209 and, and the Arrowhead Road. And so we would have, in front of the existing uh, hotel, we'd have a temporary casino that would be polypropylene tilt up. It's kind of how things are done when gaming is approved in different jurisdictions is they you know, put up a temporary structure. It's about three football fields in, in, uh, in, in size. It's, it's really enormous. And, you know, it's not really temporary because you know, it's actually quite a permanent building, but that would be the first phase of it. Second phase, the third phase. So the second, second phase would be then starting to develop the main property on the third phase would be to actually build out the casino and eliminate the temporary facility from the front and then we'd have permanent operation in the back. So this is this is a two and a half year development project. It's a massive amount of local manpower and services are going to be needed just to do the building and construction portion of that, let alone the jobs needed for the operation of the property. And let me just talk about who, who we've got on the team here so that people will understand the seriousness of the endeavor here. Um, Chazen is a uh, you know, very, very well-known local engineering firm to major projects in, in the region. Our, our law firm out of Albany is one of the biggest ones. Uh, Traff Tishman is the, is the largest builder of casinos in the eastern United States. They've built virtually every major gaming property in Atlantic City. Uh, there's nobody better than Tishman at, at doing the construction. You know, Fazio on the golf course. <laughs> you know, the idea is to make this golf course uh, what it was, which is a great place for people to come. And, when it was built in the 1950s, it was 6,500 yards, considered to be a very, you know, very challenging course. And nowadays, you need to be 7,200 yards, and, and you need to have all kinds of amenities. And we've got all that in the planning. So we're not just talking about building a casino here. We're talking about outdoor activities, golf, etc. That will be world class. So, so where do we go from here? Um, so the, the landscape is is as follows. I believe I believe that the constitutional amendment will pass in November. Um, most people don't seriously doubt that that's going to be the case. Uh, there's there's I was in Albany two three weeks ago, and there was discussion about things that are coming up for constitutional amendment. One is the age of judges. One has to do with the, with redistricting. One is casino gaming, and there was lots of debate over the, the, the redistricting of the age of judges, but there was really no debating over the gaming one. So I think that that's going to happen. You know, all of the polling indicates that the state is in favor of it. Um, it's not clear whether what the state is going to do about letting people know where they might go, though. So there's, and there's two, two schools of thought on that. 
One is that there be some indication before November as to where things are going to go so that people have an idea before they vote on it where they might be. Uh, and that seems to be the prevailing view, the majority view. The minority view is, you know, don't give opponents uh, something to, 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 uh, to uh, scream about, and so don't tell them where it's going to go. Uh, that's the minority view. In February, there's a Casino Control Commission that will be funded under the New York State budget beginning of February 1st. Um, unclear as to how the state is going to regulate it, unclear what agency will it will be called. Uh, unclear uh, how the selection process is going to go down. So, you know, right now, what, the best that we can do is uh, make all the economic arguments as to how this is going to impact the region. Uh, the best that we can do is tell Albany that we're ready to go. The best that we can do is tell Albany that, that our politicians are unanimously in support of it. And the best that we can do is say that our business community is, is unanimously behind it. And that the, the last item is why I'm here today. So, this is. You know, something obviously that's very important to my company, my investors, myself. Um, but I grew up in New York. You know, I grew up in, in Westchester County, went to Fordham Law School. Um, you know, I've worked on gaming projects uh, around the country and, and, and overseas. And this is a uh, once in a lifetime opportunity for me to be able to work on something that is literally 90 miles from my home uh, in a community of people that, you know, that are my people uh, to do this. And so, uh, you know, I can't stress enough, number one, what an honor and privilege it is for me to own the Neville League. I've, I got, uh, I, I was agitated at first when people used to come up to me and, and old ladies would come up and say I was married there, or I had my first job there. I mean, at first it was like, oh, please lady, leave me alone, right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> It's true. Uh, uh, and then, um, then I, I, I've come to, to recognize that it's actually an honor and a privilege to be the owner of the Neville property. Um, it has so much history. It is so intertwined with Ulster County and, uh, and the people of Ulster County. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's something that is a privilege for me. Uh, and to be able to take that and apply uh, a vision to it that's a collective community vision as to what might happen there uh, and to use what's happening in Albany uh, to our advantage for change um, is, all a, is all a very, very gratifying thing. And so um, I'm here. Uh, I feel like I'm running for office. I'm here for your vote. <laughs> um, I'm here to ask for your support. I'm here to thank you for the support that many people in the room have already given me. I'm here to ask you whenever you can possibly say to anybody that matters, and the people that matter most are Governor Cuomo, Senator John Bonasek, uh, uh, Dean Skelos. Uh, uh, the, these people are enormously important to the project. Uh, let them know that we need this and that we have to have this. This is going to be a great project. It's going to be great for the county. It's going to be great for the region. It's going to be great for Ellenville. Ellenville, when's the last time you know, many of you in the room were down there? It's terrible. It's really terrible right now. Uh, and this is a great, great opportunity to turn that, that, that little village around. Uh, and that's going to have a big impact all the way up through Kingston. So with that, I'm going to ask for questions. Um, I, I'm happy to answer any and all questions that you've got. And I'm told I have 15 minutes. Yes, the question is the uh, secret process. So um, the, we've already uh, we've commenced the process. The town of Worsing has been designated the lead agency. Um, we've uh, completed the scoping of the seeker. Uh, we've had a public comment uh, uh, a month ago, I think was the, was the public comment, on the scope of it. The scope has been finalized, and we're in the process of now doing the uh, draft generic environmental impact study. <coughs>
purchases that from local businesses and high-level jobs, a percentage must be um, local and, and be very specific so that Ulster County doesn't get screwed again like we did with the jail and so many other things. I think it's a great thing if what you're, but not just to give lip service to, to local, but to put it in the contract and enforce that. Um, the answer is no. I'm not going to put a percentage in the contract. What I, what I will do and what, uh, what my partners and the, and the company will do is work with uh, SUNY Ulster and SUNY New Paltz uh, in order to establish programs so we can train people locally in order to feed into those positions. Uh, that's the, that, is the, uh, that is the best way to get uh, qualified people into those. Um, you mentioned lots of low paying jobs. You know, sure, there'll be chambermaids that have to clean the rooms and there, to be sure there will be those. Uh, you can make $100,000 with a high school education dealing blackjack. You know, you can, you can do quite well uh, at, a, at a casino property. And these skills are very transferable right now. You can go, you can go uh, throughout the United States internationally with the skills that you'll learn here. So this is, this, this is, this, this is a, a, a very serious uh, attempt to create local jobs. And you know, I, I would venture to guess that some people will come from outside of the area initially that have the requisite skills to do this because they don't exist locally. Okay, we, can't, we, can't, we can't have somebody come and do something that they don't know how to do. What percentage of purchases will be made from local businesses and how will that be enforced? So uh, uh, the question is what percentage of uh, purchases will be made locally? So the, the philosophy under the buy local agreements is wherever possible, <coughs> buy locally, and that's wherever possible. You know, it's a, well, it's, I can't do more than that. I can't buy something from somebody that, that doesn't provide it locally. And I can't tell you a percentage or a number because I don't know. Uh, Mike, having worked at the Nebley, I've seen the good and the not so good, so I'm 100% behind you. I hope this project goes full speed ahead. Uh, what I wanted to ask you is if it does happen and you have the one in Monticello, how do you see that? Uh, as a, Is it a benefit of having another resort in the area sort of of like Mohegan Sun and Foxwoods in Connecticut? Sure, uh, so the, the question is, is two better than one? Uh, and the answer is yes, you know, it creates a regional destination. We want to give people a reason to come up to Ulster County, we want to in, the, in, the, in the entire Hudson Valley. People before were talking about how it's one of the great places in the world to come visit. So we want people to come up here, we want them to have fun, we want to give them choice. Uh, I would venture to guess that what's going to happen in Monticello is going to be something very slick and very fun for, you know, 25 year olds and their girlfriends. Yeah, et cetera, great nightclubs, et cetera, but that's not what we're going to be. We're going to be about, you know, reactivating the ski slope and, you know, great outdoor athletics and great golf course and other things. And of course, we're going to have a casino at it, but uh, that's the driver that's going to run things. Um, but, uh, you know, two is going to be much better than one. It's going to create a regional destination instead of just having Monticello be a single, single destination. Michael, <coughs> Michael right. could you talk a little about the family part of the resort and the, the aquatics? I mean, that's... Sure. <laughs> so, um, there's a... a um, big focus on the activities of the property, which again is what the Nebula has always been about. So we've hired the Aquatics Group out of Boston, which is the number one developer of water park uh, themed stuff. Uh, and, um, and so there's indoor and, uh, indoor and outdoor features to it. And so suffice it to say that there's going to be state-of-the-art uh, indoor and outdoor uh, water features in addition to the, you know, the skiing and the ice skating and the tennis and the squash and the, you know, spa and all that other stuff is going to be there. It's going to be a place that's going to have a ton of things going on. It's going to be a great place for people to want to go to. I'm hoping that everybody in this room is there when we open up. Um, and so it really is focused on being family friendly, much more so than, than likely the competition. Hi, I'm wondering if you've had a chance yet to assess the local housing market, both to attract people to the jobs and to serve the diversity of jobs that are in the plan. Yeah, that, so the housing is a big issue. Uh, could, could potentially be a big issue. Uh, the amount of jobs that this would create, both for the construction jobs at the beginning and the, and the final jobs, uh, would uh, quickly deplete the inventory in the, in the local area. And so, you know, we're going to need housing uh, throughout the county, in, including the eastern part of Sullivan County. That's going to be critical. Um, How is that going to get done? Well, you know, first and foremost, the existing stock needs to be absorbed. And, you know, there's lots of homes and stuff that uh, we, we're hoping will be rehabilitated, et cetera. And then to the extent we need to build housing, we own 100 acres across the street from, I mean, the Nebley is so, so big, I have, two, I have two Ulster County legislators for the property. <laughs> and so, I'm not joking, not. I, TJ Briggs is one of them here, and Craig Lopez is the other one. So, uh, so we've got, um, 
we've got 100 acres across the street from the front entrance where we can put workforce housing and, and that kind of stuff. But first and foremost, we're looking for you know for private uh, businesses and stuff to help with the, with the, the housing needs, which will be substantial. Jeff Kaplan, over to the right. Okay. Uh, good morning. Oh, excuse me, Jeff. I should recognize you. This is the mayor. This is the mayor of Ellenville, Jeff Kaplan. Yeah. First, I just got to disagree with you. Ellen was not a terrible place. <laughs>
governor, uh, the ultimate decision is probably going to be in the governor's office as to where these facilities reside. We need to work on that now. Many of you in the room here have contacts <coughs> in Albany. Let's start using them. I don't really have any questions. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Assemblyman Pete Lopez. Michael, in your economic development uh, analysis, and I know you're progressing with that, have you looked at, uh, have gotten to the point of assessing sales tax and property tax benefits for the region? It's, uh, it is part of the scope of the work that's being done right now. I do, I'm doing a draft of the report in early January, so I can't tell you what that is. I can tell you that the, that the uh, sales tax numbers, which go right to the county, will be very meaningful. But, uh, but it's under study. Just um, 
lot of you don't know Michael Trainer, and I didn't know him about a year and a half ago or two years ago. I'm going to put him on the spot and, and ask him to explain who he is and, and who are the people behind him on this project. But let me just tell you a quick story. Um, for some of you, you're seeing him for the first time. For me, I've watched this evolve over the course of the last year and a half or two, sat in the courtroom <coughs> when it was before judge work, and there were four or five different uh, prospective buyers for the hotel, and the judge decided on, on Michael and his folks. And on the way out the door, Michael uh, came up to me and said to me, and, and we'll be sure to make, uh, we'll be sure to see you and make the county whole in about a million dollars worth of taxes that the previous owner owed. A million seven. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing about 700,000. Uh, and, 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 and he kept his word. And, and, and that was the first thing that told me that, that, that he was truly legitimate. And I watched him every step along the way deliver what he said he was going to do. And, and I think, you know, again, for, for those of you here, this is your, your first experience with him. For us in Ellenville, uh, the mayor, Steve Kelly, uh, the town of Rochester, the Roundup Valley Business Association, uh, we vetted him already. We know who he is and we know what he can do. And I wanted to explain to you um, who is behind this project and, and what qualifies him to do this project. Thanks, Mike. It was a million seven hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. Not that I'm forgetting. Is, you know. uh, uh, who am I? Uh, I went to. Uh, I grew up in Pelham, New York, in Westchester County. I went to Pelham High School. I went to Holy Cross College, Fordham Law School at night. Worked at Chase Manhattan Bank. Lehman Brothers as a banker, and then I've done private equity, mostly focused on gaming properties. Since then, one of my partners, former chairman of MGM, Larry Wolf, he was at the trial, gave testimony, built the MGM Grand in Las Vegas for Kirk Kerkorian. Uh, you know, this is what we do. This is our group. I've owned, I've owned at various points in time six casino properties in, in Las Vegas. I've got projects in Florida, Taiwan, and Ontario, Canada going right now. In addition to that, this is this is kind of what I do. So, but I've never done it in my backyard in my own home state. So, uh, which I'm appreciative of. Thanks, Elliot. Carl. Um, Carl Chipman, supervisor, <coughs> kind of rocks. Mentioned my name a couple of times. I guess you could say that he's in my backyard. I'm the next town up the road. Um, I don't see a downside to this. Currently, I have two resorts in my town. I have the Hudson Valley Resort that's uh, in bankruptcy. They owe about $22, $23 million. They're, they're assessed for about $5 million. We have problems there. I have the Pine Grove Ranch that has survived through everything. Um, we make this area an area destination. We add in Williams Lake in Rosendale. Folks, people are going to come here. It's going to help my resorts. On a personal level, I used to manage a business in Ellenville. I was the general manager of a GM dealership that was closed thanks to bankruptcy and the federal government. Um, I remember when the Nevely was one of my largest customers. I remember the people that used to work there, the managers and stuff. Most, many of them lived in my town. So as far as housing goes, we have plenty of houses for sale in Rochester. <laughs> so we can handle that problem too, okay? So I, I don't see a downside. I think Michael is underestimating the spin-off the job. I need my resorts to be at full of capacity. I hate going by on a midweek and seeing no cars there, okay? We need to change that. And by doing, doing so, and I, I work in different capacities. I'm also the vice chair of the Shonda Byway. We need people coming to our area. They need to look at, and it's not competing one town against another or anything like that. You have Diamond Mills up in, up in Sorgerty. We need people to start looking at Ulster County and the Catskill thing. This is the place to go. And I think this is a major, major step for that. And I support it 110%. <laughs> a bed tax that goes to Ulster County. That bed tax helps fund Ulster County tourism, all of the promotion that the county does as a whole. With the Neville being closed, there was a huge hit at one time, am I correct, like $200,000 or whatever from the Ulster County tourism budget because of a hotel that was closed. 
So when you think about it, not only is it, and I live in Ellenville, but not only is it going to bring people, but part of that money <coughs> is a united effort to totally promote Austin <coughs> County and the area as a destination property. Thank you. Good point. Good point. Good point. Four hundred fifty-two rooms. Thanks, <coughs> question. <laughs> What's the situation with the previous market um, property? Uh, the lender is iStar Financial in New York. Uh, they have a mortgage on it, sixteen point one million unpaid principal balance. Uh, it's in default. Uh, no mortgage foreclosure actions have been taken. Um, nor do I expect there will be any until you know this gets resolved. Uh, the mortgage lender has two choices. You know they can foreclose the property and uh, which would take two or three years and under the best case uh, scenario. They can foreclose on the property and uh, and get a couple million dollars on the mortgage or they can wait and see if we can get approval for a casino and get repay their mortgage in its entirety. So uh, it's, that, it's that simple. Maybe one more. One more. Last question. <laughs> I promise this is going to be worth it. It's more of a thank you and a comment. As a what I consider over-educated young professional uh, relocated recently to this area with an eight-month-old child. I want to say thank you for bringing an opportunity to those of us who are young and aspiring people that we can stay in this community. For those of you who say, I remember when, that's not good enough for the young professional. It doesn't count for anything towards my PowerPoints. I want to say thank you for bringing an opportunity to this area so I can stay with my family in Albany, my husband's family in the Hudson Valley, and we can make a home here and stay for my baby and make a good future in this area. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful, blessed Christmas, New Year's. We'll see you back in January. Mike, I will stay and answer some more questions if you have them. Thank you.